Welcome to the Hawaii Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Hawaii. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from American University. Take it. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrea Felder, and I'm the Assistant Vice Provost for Undergraduate Admissions at American University in Washington, DC. Here's a little information about AU. So let's start off with where we're located. I'm often asked if we're located actually in Washington, DC, and the answer is yes. We are in the Northwest quarter of the city, about four miles from downtown. Students can very easily access all parts of the city and the surrounding communities in Maryland and Virginia through public transportation, either by using the metro system or by using the bus system throughout the city. Um, but it's very easy to get around. There's quite a bit to do here in, in Washington, DC. Uh, so we do encourage students to use the city as their backyard. A little bit about who we are. Um, we make up about uh, 14,000 students at American University. Um, our undergraduates are about 8,500 students. So we are considered a mid-sized campus community. You will very easily see your peers and um, throughout the day as you walk across campus. Uh, faculty are very accessible. The average class size at American University is 23 students and the student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Our students come from all over the US and around the world. And 32% of our students do identify as students of color. Students have over 70 majors to choose from within our six schools and colleges. American University is probably most well known for our School of International Service. However, there is strength in all of our majors and opportunities available to students. When you come to the university, most students do indicate a specific major, but you do not have to have your major decided by the time you enroll. Uh, students have until the second semester of their sophomore year to decide which major is going to be the right fit for them. We do pride ourselves at AU on the very experiential opportunities that are available to our students. By the time students graduate from AU, about 91% will have had an internship opportunity, either in the DC or surrounding areas. Most students automatically assume and think about the Hill and think about Capitol Hill and interning uh, with our nation's politicians. Uh, but there are opportunities to, uh, to intern in uh, communications and business, as well as in public service and other areas. Uh, so there's quite a bit uh, opportunity for students in the DC metro area. We do also encourage students to study abroad. AU is a global campus and community. About 70% of our students will study abroad before they graduate from AU. We offer over 150 programs um, in just about every uh, continent across the, the world. Um, the only place that we do not go to, is, as many are familiar, is probably Antarctica, um, but we do encourage students to study abroad during their time as an undergraduate. You do not have to be fluent in a particular language. You could study during a semester for a year or a summer or even some short inter, uh, study abroad opportunities through spring breaks or smaller um, breaks throughout the year. We do want students to be active and involved in the community with over 150 student clubs and organizations. Um, there's plenty for students to do on campus, many ways that students can be involved, whether it's through our Kennedy Political Union, which brings prominent speakers to campus, such as Stacey Abrams or Dr. Fauci, or our uh, community garden, uh, those who work in our community garden and help to make sure that it stays and remains clean. Our band and our PEP um, band, as you see here, there are lots of ways for students to be involved at AU. We do also have an athletic presence and we participate in the Patriot League. Uh, with 15 Division I teams, there is strength and opportunity for those of you who may be student athletes. Maybe you're not going to be on one of our uh, Division I teams, but perhaps you'll join a club team. 
Students can live on campus, even though we are in a city. Uh, there are 12 residence halls, and most of our first-year students, about 95% of our first-year students do live in a residence hall. When you get to the uh, sophomore year, it's about 80% of our students live in a, a residence hall. With many opportunities for living learning communities, there is a way that you will find a home at AU. Just very quickly, AU offers three uh, deadline options two early decision binding deadlines, as well as one regular decision. We do require students to submit either the Common App or the Coalition application. AU has been test optional for the past 11 years, so we're, uh, we encourage students to consider applying to the university as a test optional applicant. We'll consider your courses and your grades in high school. Our most competitive students have taken a challenging curriculum and have earned mostly A's and B's throughout high school. We'll ask for letters of recommendation, essays as part of your application as well. AU is committed to making the institution affordable. Uh, so we do meet 100% of our demonstrated need. As well, just by applying to the university, you're automatically considered for merit-based scholarships. So there's no separate application to be considered for merit to the university. I encourage you to, after today, to learn more about us. You can follow us on most of the social channels, uh, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, you can also visit our website. We have quite a bit of virtual options um, that students can choose and enjoy during, during uh, the spring and the summer to learn more about AU. And I think that's my time, so thank you. Feel free to answer, ask any questions in the chat session. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Duke. Kunshan University. Hi, welcome to Duke Kunshan University. We are Duke University's new joint venture university in China. And essentially what we're offering is like a Duke Education 2.0 taught in English in China to top international students from all around the world. You do not have to speak any Chinese at all to apply or get in. The entire curriculum is taught in English. So as a joint venture university, we are owned and operated by three partners. The first is Duke University, which is typically ranked in the US top 10 and worldwide top 20. Our second partner is Wuhan University, which is one of China's top 10. And our students study on both campuses at DKU in China and Duke University in North Carolina and earn two degrees. So this is the city of Quinshan. It's one of the greenest and wealthiest cities in all of China. And this is where our campus is located and growing. It's about 21 minutes by high-speed train to Shanghai. So our students have really easy access to all the wonderful modern and international amenities Shanghai has to offer. We're also about 20 to 21, or sorry, 20 to 30 minutes away from China's historic water towns like this one. So in contrast to those modern glitzy cities, we also have places where our students can visit and experience more of like traditional and historic China. As I mentioned earlier, the flagship study away is for our students to study at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina, USA, for part of the third year. So typically either the fall or spring semester of the junior year, um, plus the option to add on a consecutive summer term. While at Duke, our students live on campus, take from the full menu of Duke courses, participate in clubs and activities, and have as much of the full Duke experience as possible. And then they do graduate with those two degrees, a Chinese degree from Duke Quinshan University and a US bachelor's degree from Duke, which is one of the most prestigious degrees you can find and opens a lot of doors. We are an American style, research-oriented liberal arts and sciences university, which is taking an innovative, practical, and global approach to higher education. We are aiming for a demographic split of about 60% Chinese nationals and 40% international. Um, we already have over 50 different countries and nationalities represented. I think with this incoming class, it's probably over 60. Um, and that's just with our four first incoming classes since we opened in 2018. 
Um, we'll have about 2,000 undergraduates when we do reach full capacity, but we're not quite there yet. Here's a quick look at our majors. They are all interdisciplinary dual majors that have been pre-packaged together, uh, much like a double major or major and minor combo. These are, in general, great preparations for STEM fields, international business and diplomacy, um, and we have just a great array to choose from. We're also innovating in how we deliver. We are running on seven week mini masters where our students can focus on just two classes at a time, uh, maybe two and a half if Mandarin is a long 14 week course that term. Uh, we also set aside every Friday for experiential learning outside the classroom. So internships, research, field trips, uh, courts, sports clubs and activities. There's so much our students love to do with those extra Fridays and sometimes three day weekends. We have some of the best student residences I've ever seen anywhere. They're all brand new and very spacious and very nice. Um, our sticker price is tied to Duke University, so it is on par with what you might see from private U.S. universities. Um, but the cost of housing, meals, and travel here is about $10,000 per year, lower than the average recommendation if you are uh, living as a college student in the United States. Additionally, over 80% of our international students receive reduced tuition through scholarships and financial aid, which can go up to 100% tuition coverage. Um, in a normal year, when travel is permitted, if you apply and get in, we will actually fly you to China in late April, put you up in a hotel, and for about a four day long weekend, give you tours of campus, sample classes, and let you just see if this feels like a good fit for you. We are safely operating face-to-face -face and coordinating the return of overseas students, faculty, and staff currently. Um, if you'd like more information, uh, please scan this. Um, you can sign up for our emails, our online events, and get a nice, super soft t-shirt in the mail. So thank you so much, and I really appreciate your attention. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from the University of Connecticut. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'm excited to tell you more about UConn. Um, so let me just share my screen with you. Great. So uh, my name is Heather Strang. I'm an admissions officer at the University of Connecticut. Um, so the University of Connecticut is located in Stores, Connecticut. This is a, uh, about an hour and a half south of Boston and about two and a half hours north of New York City. So we are very centrally located in the heart of New England. As you can see on the map, we do have four regional campuses as well. Um, they are smaller and non-residential, so typically students that are going to be joining us from out of state are going to be joining us on our main campus um, in stores. We also do have the majority of our undergraduate student population on the stores campus, so we just have about 19,000 undergraduates on the main campus, but we have about 24,000 altogether, including our, uh, excuse me, across all five of our campuses, and we're about 30,000 students, including our graduate student population, so we are considered a large university. We are also ranked in the top 25 public universities in the country by US News and World Report. And we are also an R1 research institution. So this is gonna be really important for any students who especially interested in any of those STEM related fields, um, just because you may have opportunities to do research as early as your freshman year, uh, which I think is great. You don't have to wait until your junior or your senior year to get involved with that if that's something you'd like to do. Um, at UConn, we do have over 110 majors across our 10 schools, excuse me, as well as 320 minors and concentrations across the 10 schools and colleges. Um, so there's really a lot of opportunity for you to find what it is you're interested in if you don't know yet. Um, but we do also have quite a few majors that are quite popular for the university and why students would like to come to UConn uh, that include nursing, engineering, business, education. We also have an agricultural school. Um, so there's definitely areas for you to hone in on what you might be interested in, but then also explore other areas that maybe you have just an interest that you want to look into a little bit more. 
We also do have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio, which I think is just important to mention because that even though we are a large institution, generally your class size is gonna be about 30 to 35 students. So you won't have to forego that one-on-one -on -one, um, personal contact with your professors and with your classmates. Um, you still get all the benefits of a large university when it comes to social um, aspects of that, but then you can still have those really great, good connections um, with faculty and staff. Sorry about that. Um, so at the university, we are a division one uh, school. We have 24 division uh, teams. We have 23 national championships. If you follow college basketball, you probably know us from that most, most likely. Um, so if you're looking for a school with a lot of uh, school spirit and feeling that hype and the excitement around any of our sporting events, you'll definitely find that at UConn. We also have over 700 clubs and organizations for students to get involved with. We have over 135 study abroad education, or excuse me, education abroad um, opportunities available to students. So we very much um, encourage students to, to take advantage of the study abroad opportunities. We have students typically in over 80 different countries across the world when things are normal. These are just some images to give you an idea of what campus is like, since obviously you can't be here right now and you're farther away. So um, we are in New England, so we do get all four seasons, including snow, uh, but it's really beautiful on campus, especially in the fall. We have a beautiful downtown area, which is that top middle photo. Um, we also um, have in the downtown area, there's you know shops, restaurants, but there's also a transportation depot where you can hop on a bus to go up to Boston or down to New York on any given weekend. Um, student life is very active. There's always something going on, whether it's our Uconic Music Festival, TED Talks, different performances by clubs and organizations, food truck festivals. We also have um, a number of different traditions on campus, Ooze Ball, which is the nation's largest mud volleyball tournament, um, the One Ton Sunday, Homecoming Carnival. So there's always something to do and always something to get involved with. Um, so moving on to admissions focused information, we are on both the Common App as well as the Coalition App. We do require official transcripts as well as a personal essay. Letters of recommendation are not required for admission, but they are really strongly recommended just because we do um, take a holistic approach to admissions and it helps give us some more insight into who you are as both a person and as a student. So we really like to see those. It says two letters, but really any number would be wonderful. If it's one or five, we will read all of them. Um, also zero is a, it's perfectly acceptable because we wouldn't hold that against you either. We are also test optional. We were test optional for this year. We will continue to be test optional for the following two um, admission cycles and our application fee is $80. Um, at the University of Connecticut, you are automatically considered for our honors program and our scholarships when you apply. There's no additional application that is required. Um, you just will automatically get considered and that will be included in your admissions decision. We also do have about 75% 70 of our student population that receives financial aid in some form. Um, at the university, we do not have early action or early decision, but we do have a priority consideration de deadline of December 1st for, um, it's also, it's priority consideration for merit scholarship and honors, so I encourage students to submit by then. It also is the mandatory deadline for any of our special programs, which include law, medicine, dental medicine, and education. January 15th is the final deadline when everything must be submitted, and then February 15th is when your FAFSA should be submitted. All admissions decisions are released on March 1st, regardless of when you submit your application. So March 1st, you get your admissions decision, financial aid, scholarship, program, honors, all of that is included. This is my contact information. So for, certainly feel free to hold on to that, write that down um, and reach out to me if you'd ever like to connect. I am the admissions officer for um, the West Coast and for uh, Hawaii and Alaska. So thank you so much and I appreciate it. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Indiana University Bloomington. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dexter Turner, and I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions with Indiana University Bloomington. So thanks for joining today. Uh, we all wish we could be in Hawaii right now, but we uh, will learn a little bit more about IU. Uh, at IU, you're going to have that opportunity to be a part of a family. And that's something that we think makes a, a big difference for every single student as they're going through this process. Uh, we do have about 33,000 undergraduate students with representation from all 50 states and 140 different countries. So it is really great because you get to meet anybody and everybody from all different backgrounds. And for us, we think that's something that really does make a big difference in your college experience. So make the most of it, but have fun with it. 
Uh, it's also great because you're going to be able to have an opportunity to explore and, and figure out what it is that you're truly passionate about when it comes to your studies. Uh, we do have 12 different colleges and schools on our campus, so you'll have that opportunity to explore and figure that out. And among those 12 different schools, we have over 200 different majors. And this is great because it really allows you to take your time and see what it is that you want to study and apply to the rest of your life. Uh, and so for us, you can have a major, you can have a double major, a, a triple major, um, you can have minors outside of your area of study, you name it. It's really up to you and really allowing you to figure out what it is that you're passionate about. So take your time and have fun with that. Uh, with us, for you to be able to have that fun and for you to be able to really find that passion, we need you to be able to make those connections with your professors. And for us, they're, they're very active in the community and they want to get to know you. Um, so with us being a large university, as I mentioned, having 33,000 undergraduate students, we do have an average class size of 30 and a student to faculty ratio of 16 to one with fewer than 6% of our classes actually being larger than 100 students. So that's something that's great for us uh, because your professors, they actually want to get to know you. So we're trying to go against that stigma of you just being a big number of being a number at a big school. So please know that your professors really are present in your life. It's also great because you're going to get support outside of that classroom uh, in addition to your professors. So if you need peer support, if you need tutoring or really any type of help, we have that for you and everything is free. Everything is located all across the campus. That way you have something readily available at your fingertips. You don't have to go searching and you don't have to go pay anything. So we really want you to know, once again, this is a big family and we're always here for you. Now, under normal circumstances, we would really encourage you to study abroad. Uh, we still do, but obviously we can't do that right now. So as the time comes, um, and we're hoping that soon, we're really going to once again encourage you to go out and have those global experiences and have those opportunities to make sure that you're broadening your horizons and getting those opportunities uh, to see the world. So this is something that really makes us special. And we are one of the top 10 public universities in the entire country uh, with our study abroad program. Uh, we do offer over 380 different programs. And this is something that's great because you can study in any language. Uh, and obviously you don't have to know a foreign language to go and study abroad. English is definitely acceptable, but it's up to you and whatever you're looking for. Now with us uh, and our, our living situation, we do actually require all of our freshmen to live on campus. And I know with a lot of students coming from Hawaii, it's something that's really, uh, it's, it's a big thought, like, okay, where am I gonna live? So we actually do offer housing all four years as well for students. So if you are interested in living on campus and don't wanna go look off campus, we do have housing for you. And it's something that is great because uh, it really does allow you that chance to continue to, to grow while you're on campus and as a community. Uh, we also have different learning communities as well. So that's great because you can find different uh, different people who have the same ideas and have the same uh, interests that you do and you can live with them as well. Uh, you can also enjoy everything that we have on campus. Uh, so if you're ever bored, uh, we tell everybody it's your fault. There's just way too much to do uh, with over 750 different clubs and organizations, whether they're academic clubs, Greek life, student government, we have different uh, intramural sports and club sports, uh, but you name it, we have it. Our goal is to make sure that you're finding that that a niche that you really want. Uh, we also are really going to promote our arts and culture clubs uh, because this is something that we think doesn't necessarily get uh, the recognition that it deserves. So we're really going to promote that as well. Uh, we also have a lot of fun traditions on our campus. Uh, as you see on the screen, one tradition right here is our IU Dance Marathon. Uh, this is great because it allows our students to uh, raise money for children's hospitals. We have our cultural fest, which allows you to explore different ethnicities and backgrounds and cultures. Uh, and then one of my favorite traditions, and I might be a little biased, but it's going to be any of our athletics. Uh, we are in the Big Ten Conference, and it's something that's absolutely exciting. But I encourage everyone to really enjoy that and lead that cream and crimson. Now, as you're applying to IU, we do have three different routes that you can take. You can apply through the IU application, which is on our website. You can apply through the common application or the coalition application. We do not have a preference. Uh, with each application, you are going to have supplemental materials that will make up the rest of that application so that it is complete. We'll need your official uh, essay, we'll need your fee, and we'll need your uh, transcript as well. Now, IU is a test optional university, so if you would like to submit your SAT or ACT scores, you can absolutely do so. If not, that is completely okay as we have this policy in place for you 
and it is something that we will have until the end of time. So uh, IU is forever a test optional university now. And we also have important deadlines that we want every student to look at and make sure that they're paying attention to. For us, uh, November 1st will be one of the biggest deadlines and that's our early action non-binding deadline. So this allows you the opportunity to get the most in scholarship money uh, and financial aid. So please pay attention to that, but we have all these dates on our website. And if you ever need me, uh, my contact information is here, but I thank you guys and I'll put this in the chat for you as well. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Salve Regina University. Hello, everyone. My name is Nick Albanese with Salve Regina University. In case you're wondering what Salve Regina means, it's Latin for Hail Holy Queen. And it's part of a Catholic prayer that the Sisters of Mercy who founded us were pretty fond of. The sisters have given us so many things over the years, um, but one of those things is, is our mission statement. I love our mission statement. I won't read the whole thing for you, but I, I like to emphasize the very first line. It's as a community that welcomes people of all beliefs. And so if you think about these nuns sitting down in a room years ago, they could have started out with words like as a Catholic institution, but I think they wanted to really emphasize that while their faith and traditions are, of course, incredibly important to them and inform all that they do, um, that being an inclusive community is the top priority for us. And that diversity of thought and opinions and backgrounds is really what makes our beliefs stronger. There are five critical concerns of the Sisters of Mercy, and these are woven throughout Salve Regina's curriculum, earth, immigration, nonviolence, racism and women. So we wanna educate our students about these topics and encourage them to think about what can you do to make the world a little bit more just, harmonious and merciful, especially in those areas. Salve is a small university. We have just over 2000 undergraduate students and about 600 graduate students. Um, we have a little over 60 undergraduate majors as well as about 15 accelerated graduate programs where you could stay on for a fifth or sixth year, depending on the program. Some of our more popular majors are any form of business, um, administration of justice, any kind of history, uh, biology, science, uh, like uh, chemistry, but we also have some unique programs. We have a Bachelor of Arts in dance, um, and we also have a very unique program called Cultural and Historic Preservation. Students in that program study the built environment, and they learn how to work essentially in applied history careers, things like historic preservation policy and management, um, working in museum studies as archaeologists, and we're in the perfect location to study that because we are in one of the best kept historic districts in New England. We're in the Bellevue Avenue Historic District, sometimes called the Mansion District. So we're on an island in Rhode Island, but there's bridges, so it's very easy to get on and off. Um, we're right on the, on the cliffs of the Atlantic Ocean. We have about 80 acres, 50 buildings, and about half of them date back to the 1800s. So you get to live in these converted mansions, barns, stables, and carriage houses, but you also have modern buildings. And we're about a 15 minute walk downtown. About 85% of our students are from out of state. We have students from 41 states and 21 nations. Um, and we're only about an hour and a half from Boston. There are direct flights from all of the West Coast cities. And there's even a direct flight from Honolulu. It's the longest flight in the US, fun fact. Um, and then we have a local airport about 25 minutes away uh, in uh, Warwick, Rhode Island. But on campus, there's so much to do. We're a Division Three university. We're well known for sailing. Uh, we also have uh, club sports like rugby. We've been national champion several times in men and women's rugby. Uh, we also have over 60 student-led organizations. That's our multicultural student organization there in the top right. Uh, we have the Pell Center for International Relations and Public Policy. It's a think tank that was founded by an act of Congress um, on our campus. And so we bring in speakers from all over the world. Uh, we had Dr. Cornell West come to campus two years ago. We had Dr. Jill Biden, um, Senator John Kerry, just really thought leaders of our generation from different backgrounds. And it's really neat for our students to be able to see them right on campus. Uh, we always have events going on. And of course, community service is very big for our student body. All of our students participate in it. And we give back to over 80 organizations right in our backyard on the island. In terms of admissions, most students at Salve have between a B plus and an A minus GPA. Uh, we are fully test optional for all majors, including our direct entry nursing program. We're a member of the common application, so it's relatively simple to apply. Um, and we waive the fee for students from Hawaii. So you would just send me an email to get that code or your counselor could do that as well. And then 
Uh, in terms of when you apply to Salve, you can either apply in the fall, in the winter, or in the spring. Students tend to be admitted at about the same rate, so we just like to give students options. And we're typically evaluating them on their freshman through junior year grades if they apply in the fall, and then we'll have some senior year grades if they apply in January or February. Nursing students do need to apply by November 1, and we have a special scholarship for our visual and performing arts students, so they should apply by January 5. Nearly all students at Salve have scholarships. So while we are a private college, we're able to get those costs down. Um, our scholarships range from twelve dollars to $25,000. You're, you're automatically evaluated for them and they're renewable every year. And they're not only based on grades. We do a holistic evaluation. We really try to understand you as a student and in the context of your environment. And so um, even students that are maybe more of a B average, but have a lot of other things going on for them can often get higher scholarships. And then we also have aid based on your family's need and we use the FAFSA or the free application for federal student aid to determine that. We have lots of events coming up, so I encourage you to go to salve.edu slash visit. Um, lots of virtual events, uh, but we also do have some limited in-person tours. Um, they are very limited because of COVID, but, but they are available. So um, you can reach out to me if you have questions about that. Um, in addition to waiving the application fee, so you have nothing to lose by applying, we do actually have um, some travel assistance funds for our admitted students from Hawaii. So you would be able to have a portion of your plane ticket reimbursed if you were admitted and you wanted to visit the campus. Um, I also want to let you know that you know, Salve was able to be open for the majority of the year during COVID. And I know if you're coming from across the country, that is an important thing. You wanna know that you're able to be safe and still go to events and do things in person. But that's my time. I appreciate you listening um, and I hope to uh, answer your questions in the Q&A. Thanks so much. Thank you. Lastly, you'll be hearing from Syracuse University. Okay, let me just get my slideshow going. Righty. Hello, everybody. My name is Camille Kreitz, and I work for Syracuse University. I am based in Los Angeles, California, and I cover Southern California and Hawaii. Um, the campus itself is a residential campus, so you are required to live on campus your first two years. And the campus is just outside of downtown Syracuse. So where is Syracuse exactly? We are right in the middle of New York State. We're about two, uh, five hours north of New York City and about five hours west of Boston. Um, from Hawaii, you can fly through any of the major East Coast cities, Midwest cities, um, even as far west as Denver. Those all have direct flights into uh, Syracuse. Sorry, right, I feel like I think my video was off for some reason. Um, all right. Okay, let's get back on track. All righty. So we have um, over 200 majors and 100 minors. Uh, divided up into 10 different colleges. Now, even though we have a population of about 15,000 undergraduate students, we do have um, smaller class sizes. So our average class size is about 26 with a student to teacher ratio of about 15 to one. So when you are in your classes, you're going to feel like you're in a much smaller college. Now we do have the opportunity to allow our students to study across curriculums. So everybody has a common core, some of the classes that they're required to take. And because of that, you can study in colleges, you can come in undecided, you can change your major, you can pick up a double major or a minor. There is a lot of flexibility in the curriculum. Um, so a lot of our students are studying in two different colleges. We, um, when you arrive at Syracuse as a freshman, you are assigned both an academic advisor and a career advisor. Uh, so everybody has um, two different advisors that are following them throughout their four years and even after graduation when it comes to career and graduate school opportunities. We are a tier one research institute. We definitely um, encourage our students, even at the undergraduate level, to get involved in research in any field. 
And we also have a top 10 um, study abroad program. So we have over 100 programs in over 60 countries available to our students. And at least half of our students do study abroad. You can study abroad as early as freshman year all the way up through senior year, depending on your academic program. And the idea is that you will study abroad for a semester or a summer program, and you'll come back to campus and you'll be right on track for graduation. So what does it mean to be orange? First of all, we're a very diverse campus. We have students from all 50 states and from over 170 different countries. We have over 300 clubs and organizations. We're a D1 sports school. We also have club and intramural sports. We have Greek life. We have a lot of community service opportunities. There's student government, all kinds of um, performance uh, clubs and organizations and also majors. Um, so there's always something happening on campus, lots of musical events and theater events as well. Um, so there's always something happening on campus. It's a very, very vibrant campus. Our Barn Center at the Arch is our health and wellness center. It's a five story health and wellness center with a health center on the bottom floor, counseling center on the top floor and athletic facilities in between, right on campus. And then our Shine Center is our student sort of hub. It's where we have our food court, it's where we have our intercultural center um, centers and our bookstore. And it's a great place for students to hang out right on campus. And then finally, uh, Syracuse is a common app school. We have early decision, which is November 15th and regular decision, which is January 1st. We do a holistic review process and we will be test optional for 2022 as well. We do um, uh, encourage interviews. They're not required, but they're definitely recommended. And for now we've been doing them virtually, but hopefully I'll be able to do some in person. Um, and we have a commitment to affordability. So when you apply to Syracuse, you're automatically considered for merit. Um, our merit scholarships start at $10,000 and go up to full tuition. And then we also offer financial aid and we have a robust um, financial aid program as well. So in the end, we finance between 75 and 80% of our students. So if you do have any questions, please reach out to me. I'm going to drop some links into the chat um, along with my contact information. And thank you for having me. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to invite all of the reps to come back on and do a quick round of Q&A. Um, so in the same order that you presented in, just uh, share what advice you would give someone going through the college search process. So um, my advice for you as you're going through the college search process is just to um, think about yourself, think about your interests and um, be true to who you are, be true to who uh, and what you're interested in um, and find a college that's going to be a right fit, whether it's a large um, public school, a medium sized private, a smaller public, whatever is uh, in your best interest. Uh, think about yourself um, and where you find yourself uh, both most being matched and fit at that institution. Hi, so we know that right now um, there are a lot of college campuses that you can't visit and tour in person. So um, I would expect that most universities do have online events um, often live events where you can tour the campus, um, you can maybe meet current students, take info sessions to learn more about it, or maybe even get um, like application advice. So I would recommend checking out the websites of those universities and just seeing if they have any of those live online events that can at least get you um, as close as we can to campus without having to leave your home. Um, so I would say that um, reiterating what, what Andrea from American University stated, um, picking something that is right for you. So um, school, major, um, but especially major, it, it's also totally fine if you don't know what you want to do yet. Um, I know many students have, you have friends or family want you to go into something very in particular. Um, you have time to figure it out and make sure that you're choosing the thing that you are passionate about and that you want to pursue um, for a career. So don't worry if you don't have it figured out just yet. 
take time and explore once you pick a college. Um, it's a, you know, if you want to try a couple different things out, get involved in different clubs and organizations, and that will really probably help you as well. Yeah, I would say in addition to everything that's been said, uh, if you haven't already, create an email account that's specific just to what you're going to get for, from colleges. That way you have your own college email. You're not going to get spammed uh, or send a whole bunch of emails to your normal email account. Uh, and then that way you keep everything in one folder and it'll make life a lot easier for you. Um, and then that way um, you have a professional looking email as well. So I would just recommend creating a new email just for colleges. Yeah, and I would say, you know, I know students can sometimes get a little stressed out by the process. Um, so maybe just kind of taking a step back to remind yourself that the majority of colleges out there admit the majority of students. And as long as you have a well-balanced list with a few options that are a bit of a stretch, a few that are, you're right on target with the averages, and a few where you feel like you're pretty confident you're going to be admitted, um, you will find a home. So hopefully, you know, kind of taking an opportunity to remove some of the stress from the process and hopefully learn a little bit about yourself um, through this college admissions process. And I would just recommend that students um, not be shy about contacting uh, representatives from the universities, people like us, because uh, we are here to help you. Uh, we do work for the Office of Admissions, and so our goal is to admit you. Um, so if you do have questions, if there is uh, a university that you might really be interested in, don't be afraid to reach out to us. Uh, we will try and get you the information you need, put you in touch with the right people on campus, um, let you know about events going on. So uh, just, you know, really be proactive and, and reach out to admissions representatives. All right. Well, thank you all so much for sharing. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. When you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four-question survey. And we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for more. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Hawaii. So thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your night. Bye.